Yesterday, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was talking with Acting DHS Secretary Kevin McKeelan and- McAleenan. McAleenan, mm-hmm. okay, uh, he's just acting, we don't have to respect it. Anyway, uh, McAleenan, uh, about the uh, ProPublica report on that uh, ridiculous, insane, violent, and racist uh, Facebook group that had thousands and thousands and thousands of members of CBP, Border Patrol, ICE, DHS, and all of that. And uh, I wanna break down some of her questions to him and his answers, here is the first. Mr. Secretary, are you aware of the ProPublica report indicating that there were about 10,000 potential current and former CBP officers in a violently racist and sexist Facebook group? I I am aware of the ProPublica article, yes. Um, Did you see any of the posts in the report? I did. Did you see the posts uh, mocking migrant children's deaths? I did. Did you see the posts planning physical harm to myself and Congresswoman Escobar? Yes, and I directed an investigation within minutes of reading the article. Did you see the images of officers circulating uh, photoshopped images of my violent rape? Yes, I did. Are those officers on the job today and responsible for the safety of migrant women and children? So there's an aggressive investigation on this issue issue Mm -hmm. proceeding. You've heard the chief of the Border Patrol, the most senior female official in law enforcement across the entire country say that these uh, posts do not meet our standards of conduct Mm -hmm. and they will be followed up aggressively. But those officers- We've already put individuals on administrative duties. I don't know which ones correspond with which posts and we've issued cease and desist orders to dozens and more. Okay, so that's sort of purposefully sort of like, hey, here's some water, here's some mud, let's swirl it up there. Uh, Yeah, many of them are still on the job, that's what I got out of it. Because we're doing an aggressive investigation as to who posted these things. Right now, the clues are their names on Facebook, Uh connected Mm -hmm. to profiles with their faces on Facebook. Okay, you're being you're being we just smug. Have to connect the dots. No, you're being smug. The only way that's going to help is that if those are their actual names. Right, they are though, and they are their so, actual names all the way up to the, the the woman that was referenced when they said we have a high-ranking female member mm-hmm. uh, whose posts are on this site. Yeah, I don't. So I don't know the name of the individual who posted for, and lots of these things are absolutely horrendous. But in particular, the, the violent rape of Representative uh, Ocasio Cortez. Uh, who is that person? Are they currently working? That would be a significant one. Maybe the people commented on it, shared it, liked it. Maybe track down those people first. That would be that would be a good one. Um, there's a few. Look, anyone who's involved in the group needs to be investigated, obviously. But the people who were sharing and uh, commenting on and just loving uh, the horrendous racism and violence and all of that, I would start with that. That would be for me an aggressive uh, investigation. Right. And well, I guess in his defense, there's ten thousand. Yes, that's posts. true. That will take a, that will take a in, little bit of time. Then. In his defense, he allowed it to get so big before finding it mm-hmm. that upon finding it, mm-hmm. uh, it really is kind of a pain in the buns to figure out. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, so, but and then also his defense was are on administrative mm-hmm. duties. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Does that mean they're actually like answering phones as opposed to out in the field? It sounds like they have more time to make memes and post them on Facebook. Right. Is we what decided it sounds like to me. The problem is that you know they really got in trouble by being on a computer, so we're gonna literally put them on a computer all day. Yeah. Um. Exactly. Uh, so we have one more video. We're gonna throw it in just a second. Um, I know that this is asking too much. And it wouldn't happen, and not just under a Republican president. This is the way you act when you're being called before Congress. But like when she's when she's listing all these things, and especially once she says, "Did you see the the pictures photoshopped of my violent rape?" and he says, "I did." Express express something. I thought he did. You did. He did. You did. He was answering officially, but he was like, "I, I didn't. I didn't find that like." He had the opportunity to say, mm-hmm. I did, and they were horrible. That's but, what I mean. But he did kind of, he just said, I did. Yeah, I'm not saying that there wasn't anything he in didn't it. Go like, there wasn't I a twist did, on know. it. He wasn't like, oh, I did. Oh, I saw I get them. that. But I'm saying, like, uh, I did, and, you know, uh, as the, the acting head of DHS who uh, has to manage these people, I just want to say it was absolutely reprehensible. It should never come to that, not for you, not for any other member of Congress whatsoever. Right. But when I think the bigger position is he already so he seemed de- defensive. He denied a culture of dehumanization. Well, we're gonna DH. get to that actually right okay. now. And that's where the defensiveness uh, comes up even more as you'll see. Do you think that the policy of child separation could have contributed to a dehumanizing culture within CBP that contributes and kind of spills over into other areas of conduct? 
We, we do not have a dehumanizing culture at CBP. Okay. Uh, this is an agency that rescues 4,000 people a year that's mm -hmm. absolutely committed to the well-being of everyone that they interact with. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I don't Ms. believe there's a dehumanizing culture. And Mr. Secretary, um, so you don't think that having 10,000 officers in a violent, racist group sharing rape memes of members of Congress points to any concern of a dehumanized culture? Congresswoman, those posts are unacceptable. They're being investigated, but I don't think it's fair to apply them to the entire organization or that even the members of that group believed or supported those posts. Mr. Secretary, uh, just one last thing. How did 10,000 members join this group, including, including, I believe, the head of CBP? Um, I'll double check, uh, including the CBP chief, how were they in this Facebook group without anybody knowing, without anyone in leadership knowing? Again, this is the subject of an ongoing investigation. I, I don't know, but I'm going to have to assume that they did not join it without leadership knowing. Well, I mean, as her she question, out, her CBP question had, is, her question it. is, how did leadership get in this group without leadership knowing? Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes you misclick. Right, you misclick and then write comments yeah. on it. Yeah, so look, he that was, in my view, a very defensive response. And I get it, he's the head of DHS. He has to defend DHS and the sub departments that, that are under it. Um, but it definitely, like, it makes me worried, not just about a dehumanizing culture in a CBP or DHS. It makes me, I mean, it makes me worry about dehumanized all of our culture. That, that this is such a big thing, not just in this group, but, but all over the place. But you know, we're focusing on this. Um, when he says, so I have a question for you. When he says, I don't think it's fair to apply this to the entire organization. What percentage of the organization needs to be a part of it before you think it's fair? Isn't it already one in seven? Like, isn't ten thousand like one in seven employees? I think it's much more than, more than one, that, in like seven. one in five. I think it might be more than that, but I'm not sure. Let's say one in five, one in seven, something like that. I think that's fair. I would say this. I would say the job that they were tasked with carrying out in child separations is itself dehumanizing. I think if I'm the head of it, I say my pri my I am always concerned about a culture of dehumanization and mm -hmm. I should and it is my cause to fight against it. Yeah. And I think that a responsible department head would say I fight that when it comes to policies like child separation, when it comes to how we allocate funds to keep people who are in these detention centers in sanitary and safe environments. And when it comes to groups like these on Facebook that run wild, we need to stop them and hold literally everyone else accountable. At that point, if you're holding them accountable, everyone that made these kinds of statements back them up um, and commented just as snarkily on them, your priority also needs to, well then you face the problem of what do I do when I have to fire mm -hmm. one in five people to work for me. Exactly, yeah, yeah, or you know, put them on administrative leave. How much administrative work is there to do? Administrative duties. Exactly, uh, yeah, exactly, just duties, not even leave. Um, so two quick updates, one uh, after all of that, and you know, that, that's so important because again, I mean, we're worried about violence against these individuals, these members of Congress, and uh, in that particular case when you know, members of the, the like in service to the US government are posting memes about them being assaulted and them being raped literally by the president. Um, I would be worried about that. And so she had her chance to talk to him and he gave responses or whatever. Uh, she said, at its core, abuses at the border are not about whether some CBP officers are good or bad people. It's about how our border policies are gravely dehumanizing and strip all involved of human decency. Once you order people to violate others' rights, a culture can quickly devolve. And I think that that's exactly right. She was asked a sort of follow up question this morning by an unidentified reporter who said, is that what you're advocating for? Open the borders to anyone who wants to come. And she replied, no, I think we're advocating for a humane border. And he, Trump, can't conceive of a border where we don't cage children, rip them from their parents. And to him, a lack of torture equals an open border. I think to him and to most of the people on Fox News. He literally cannot think of an immigration system where we don't hurt innocent people. So I think that's where he's coming from. And I think that that's right. She was attacked constantly for saying that DHS should be destroyed. And you know, we go back to the system that we had just 17 years before ago, before there was DHS. She was attacked relentlessly for that. And uh, I mean, look how it's being used and how much we found out just in the week since then. When their argument is, when the founders of this country created the Department of Homeland Security in 2001, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. It's like, no, that's new. No. You're picking and choosing what you think the fundamental aspects of this country are, and you can't do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and well, I would say that mine many, are more, my arguments for what I consider to be fundamental uh, promises of this country are are better and more virtuous than theirs. And remember, when they attack her for saying that basically one of the newest components of the US government should be devolved and those uh, subcategories put back to what they were doing, but with more oversight. Uh, just remember that every Republican primary debate is a race to see who can name the most departments they want to destroy. Education and the EPA and all right. this stuff that are just, they're a little bit older. Yeah. DHS. Just Going back to old ways is inherently a conservative position. Exactly. Thanks for watching this free clip of the Young Turks. Don't forget to become a TYT member today. For more exclusive content, join now at tyt.com/join.